psychologist, teaches at the College of New Jersey. And uh, Dr. Clydesdale is a sociologist, like all of you, <laughs> and has written a book about how we help undergraduates develop a sense of purpose and calling in their lives, and is here today to work with faculty and staff to help think about how we do that with you all. But we wanted to have a chance to introduce him to you as somebody who has found his purpose in sociology, right, and has chosen to lead and serve in the world in that way. Uh, this is a class of research methods in sociology. So how many of you are sociology majors? Well, there we go. A lot of them will be concentrating in criminology because we're a joint department, really. But but everybody in here would be in here because it's a required class for the major. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. And this is uh, Dr. Alyssa Yogan, who is the uh, professor of sociology teaching in, and Dr. Dylan Bartouche, the chair of the sociology department here, Dr. Clydesdale. So we're going to start with just a ten-minute little videotaped interview where I'm going to interview. Dr. Clydesdale about his own choice in becoming a sociologist, and then we're going to break for pizza. If you want pizza, you probably didn't know when you came to class today that you were going to be offered pizza, <laughs> but um, we'll have that here and available around 11.15 and then come back to the tables and you can have um, a conversation with Dr. Clydesdale yourself, okay? But we have a YouTube channel and we like to uh, take conversations with our speakers so that we can share more broadly the great folks we're bringing to help raise the university. Like, Sorry, Clydesdale. So, welcome. Thank you. It's good to be here. Very glad you made it. It was an epic journey through fog and ice and. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, it's yes. <laughs> so, I'd like to hear a little bit about your epic journey through sociology. So, all right. Well, that's a great question because. Um, like a lot of students, I imagine a lot of students here in this room, uh, I had no idea what sociology was until I took the first class in it. Um, I had taken psychology and I thought I was interested in psychology when I first uh, came to, to college. Uh, declared uh, a major in that when I arrived um, and took me into a psych and it's like, eh, you know, it was, it was okay. It was, you know, rats and memory and cognition and synapses and, uh, you know. At the very end, we had a couple of weeks, a couple of days, I think we did social psych. I found that pretty interesting. Didn't realize that, of course, is the point where sociology touches and overlaps with, with psychology. Um, and so then I was looking for another social science we could take, too. And so I, uh, you know, economics sounded too hard, anthropology. I couldn't pronounce any of the professor's last names. And so I ended up with, uh, with sociology kind of all marked. Um, and it was kind of at the end of the first day, I was like, oh, Wow, this is this one. This is where the people are. I, I didn't find them in psychology. Also, here they were. There was, you know, there was um, uh, race and ethnicity and 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 crime and deviance and 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 uh, and religion and and family. I mean, all this this stuff that was so exciting for me. So I was hooked on the on the field after that first day. I got hooked on research after my research methods class. So this, this class here in particular really changed my life. Okay, say um, a little more that. about that. What sure, was that aha sure. moment or that wow in research? You know, I think what it was for me in this class, and I'll actually be teaching, I, I start two sections of it at my institution in another week. Um, but the talk that I always give to students at the beginning of class is, one, it's a class that will change your life. And two, because you get to do something that up till now you haven't done as a student, which is you actually kind of get in, but you've been kind of watching kind of through the fence. Um, your faculty create knowledge, and then you kind of, you, you kind of work with what's been created, or other people have created knowledge, and you're actually invited in this class to kind of climb up over the fence and actually learn how to create knowledge um, for the first time. And I suddenly realized, you know, in the midst of trying to learn about things like hypotheses and dependent and independent variables and control variables and all that sort of stuff, that I was actually answering a question that really hadn't been asked quite like that before, and the results of that would actually be important to people who wanted to know more about social life. Um, and so I really kind of got hooked on research at that point. So. And was it the qualitative or the quantitative side? I mean, I'm not a sociologist, yeah, but I know that's right. one of yeah, the choices so, you made. So I, 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 I started with, with, um, with quantitative um, and, and did, uh, and did Primarily the quantitative. I had a knack for the statistics and, and, and using the computer, which back then was 
a monstrous thing we tied into a mainframe and all that sort of stuff. But um, still running the numbers, uh, found one that was a way to make money because uh, that's one really other nice thing about this class is it's one of the most practically useful classes you'll ever get and, and has the most kind of marketplace value. Um, but uh, began to, to, to run numbers, got a job after college, working in a hospital, helping them do internal evaluation, quality assurance sort of reports. Um, and, and then soon began to get tapped uh, initially by people in nursing and physical therapy and eventually ended up, even though I had only a bachelor's degree, I was, I was an author even with physicians on papers because I was running the numbers so that they could, they could compare this treatment versus that treatment. I didn't even know what the treatments were. I just knew it was group A versus group B. I could run those numbers and that's what I would do and, thus, you know, and, and the science is just lots of names at the end. So I, my name got in on a few of them. Um, but I, I really got hooked on, on research, and uh, so it was quantitative. And it wasn't until I began as a professor that I moved more to qualitative research. And now uh, I do, I've done mostly qualitative more recently, although again, I've got a book I'm working on right now that includes a survey again, so I'm doing a little bit of quantitative. And what was it about the qualitative uh, approach that began to engage you? Was there a particular question we wanted to answer, and you thought, oh, I'm going to have to to move a little into the qualitative? Um, part of it was, you know, I started as an assistant professor. I had, um, you know, I had several different chapters that I was trying to turn into articles on my dissertation, and so I had plenty of access to data. I thought, I want to do something new, do this something different. And I thought, well, I'll, I'll study. Um, college students. That's what social scientists have traditionally always done. We got a lot of you, so you kind of just become guinea pigs for our studies. And so I thought, well, I'll, you know, I'll, I can come up with it. I got a little bit of money from the dean to offer some interview uh, incentives and began interviewing uh, new, new first year students and then interviewed them again uh, at the end of the first year. And everything I thought I knew about what happened in the first year of, of college was completely wrong. At that point, I was hooked. Um, and it's like, all right, I've got to figure this out. So that's really what kind of drew me into qualitative is I actually, you know, found that my hunches weren't supported to what I wanted to learn more. And you've been studying college students ever since, right? Is right. your current yeah. research yeah. on? Uh, it, it is, and then, well, actually right now I'm, I'm working on a book uh, on the religious and spiritual lives of American 20 something. So there are some college students at the beginning of that, um, but, but really just kind of looking at, at throughout the 20s. How people uh, use um, and interact with uh, religious, spiritual ideas through the real life course. And so I'm looking at that. Yeah. Well, we're sitting right now in the sort of the shadow of the chapel mm -hmm. here at Valpo. As you've seen, there's a very large chapel in the center of campus. And we are a place that talks about the relationship of faith and learning. So, could we just talk briefly about that? Sure. In your own life and work, you have chosen to study religion as part of. Does that come out of a part of your own personal pathway to purpose? Oh, Where certainly. Where interest in religion come from? Sure. Well, so I, I mean, I grew up in a, a very, very conservative, blue-collar, fundamentalist family. Um, and, uh, and despite kind of the way that turned off so many of my, um, of my peers um, that I knew uh, from my church, I found in the core of Christianity something very deep and, and beautiful and engaging. Um, so uh, as I went on to college, I actually had had thought I was uh, I was both a Bible major and first a psych major and then a sociology major. And I thought I was heading to become a, 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 a minister. Um, realized that there, I had some basic character gaps. Um, like I can still remember when I was a high school student, and I, I shadowed my my pastor said, and I said, "Well, what are some of the important things a pastor needs to have?" And he said. Um, I really think compassion, and, and here's my answer, this is the God's honest truth. I said, what's that? Um, and, uh, you know, I, you know it, just, it, it just has never kind of clicked. So thankfully, none of you will be my students. I, when I tell that to my students, they don't laugh. They're like, uh, great, that okay, professor doesn't even know what the meaning of compassion is. Um, but, uh, but, but still, I think what I found in, in the end was that I was keenly interested in, and remain, um, uh, remain a Christian, keenly interested in issues of faith, and, but I'm interested in how, how people understand and make sense of, of, of life. I mean, that's, that's the challenge of, of adulthood, really, is finding a way to kind of find a, a, find a personal purpose and find a, a, a way of understanding the whole world that kind of makes sense. Um, and what sort of meaning systems do we have? So 
uh, you know, I guess technically I'm a sociologist of religion, but really I'm a sociologist of meaning systems. I'm just interested in how it is that people construct a life that's meaningful and, and, and live into that. Um, and so that, that's part of what engages me. Have you ever written about sociology as a meaningful way of life? I haven't done that. There have been some folks who have. Um, I think sociology is a very useful lens for thinking about, about that. Um, but one of the things that sociology can become is it, it can become very positivist in, in some segments. And so therefore it just completely excludes things that it can't measure or observe. Um, and I think that's that's a mistake because something can always be measured or observed doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Um, and so um, I, I think that's that can be a downside to a too positivist kind of orientation of social life. Yeah. Well, we really appreciate your coming here to talk both about your own pathway to purpose and uh, your research methods, and it's a delight that actually research methods was such an important part of that story. But we also